This podcast episode is brought to you by The Cry Lounge. The Cry Lounge is an independent publishing company founded by this podcast host, Bonnie Orbison. The Cry Lounge transfers your daydreams onto paper. With two book releases the past two years, they are preparing to extend their service to other authors and other creatives. To get more details and support this show, there's a link in the description you can check out. The Cry Lounge looks forward to meeting you. the theme song by E.B. Solis. Welcome back to another episode of Bonnie's Legends with me, host Bonnie Orbison. Today's episode is um, about seven series uh, who I discovered two years ago um, through an Instagram advertisement, basically. Um, he promoted his latest single girl in black and yeah since then i follow him i'm always curious what he's doing and i really love his music a lot like how he's doing music and what for a passion you can hear like you can hear his passion for his own music in his songs and that's what i love about literally every artist where you can hear it, that the artists are really passionate about what they're doing and that they really spend a lot of time and a lot of love for these songs. Um, so yeah, I appreciate him as an artist. And in April, I published my um, English version of my novel, Follow Me. And in April as well, Theo, Seven Seas' real name, announced his upcoming album right then, right now. And uh, he bought a copy of my novel. And I was like, hell Yeah! The dude is bringing out an album. I should support him. And I want that my audience of my podcast is also supporting him. So I asked him. He joined the meeting. We talked for two, for one and a half hours. And li about literally about everything. About making music. But also about literature. As this is my topic. My genre. Where I am known for. And we played, we played a funny game two lies and the truth it was really funny and um yeah enjoy it and go stream theater's new single cheater what i had the pleasure to listen to even before it came out thank you theo for that it was a pleasure i still love the song i still have it on repeat and you should do the same and you should also stream when his upcoming album right then right now is coming out and yeah support him and If you can't get enough of this episode, I have I asked Theo the 10 bonus questions. The link is in the description. So there you will get the link to my Buy Me A Coffee page where independent creators can create content um, for their fans and they can give it back. They're supporting them in a way. And there you can support the podcast and get your 10 bonus questions of 7 years with becoming a member of the membership the legendary listener maybe we we'll see us there and um also in the description you get the link to my book what Fiona and i also talk about in this episode but now i'll let you listen to the episode 
Have fun and tune in next week for another episode. And make sure to subscribe to this podcast show, Bonnie's Legends. All right. Have fun. Ladies and gentlemen, seven seers. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine as well. Um, uh, yeah, thank you for being my guest today. Oh, it's my, uh, it's an honor. <laughs> I checked um, your, I checked your, your podcast on online and uh, I was, re I was really excited to see like, this is season three and. <laughs> yes, yes I know. I haven't expected, like when I started season one, I was like, all right, I just do one season and then I stop. Yeah, well. <laughs> like a one-off. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, have you listened to my podcast, like? Yeah, I actually um, listened to uh, listen to a few of them. When you told me about it, I mean, um, when I got the book, there was a yeah. uh, there was a note with uh, with it, and actually inside the book, so there I'll was it yeah out. the bookmark. <laughs> Not only the bookmark, there's like in the where is it on the uh, yeah in the beginning, right? There's like Bonnie's the, Legends, but also the bookmark because chapter one, yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, Bonnie's Legends. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so! Oh my goodness, I have to take a pic. Sorry, I have to take a picture of you and my book. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Oh, hold on. <laughs> yes. That's such a crazy feeling. <laughs> You're holding my book. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's kind of like um, it's like um. How is it saying? How is the right term? It's like invisible marketing with my podcast with the bookmark mm -hmm. and the slide note. <laughs> I think I, I think it's very clever. It's a very clever way of uh, advertising your podcast because I know marketing can be can be real tough. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So okay, so like in season one and season two, I described uh firstly my legends to the listener and the season three i was thinking of doing it the other side because i know that everybody would describe themselves differently so like how would you describe yourself me um well i'm an introvert first of all uh i know it's i know it's uh it's it's kind of trendy to say say these things uh, these days but um mm. I'm I'm kind of an introvert but cre uh, the creative type. Yeah. I'm sensitive but I don't really show it. So people actually think I'm insensitive, <laughs> which is funny. Uh but yeah, I'd say a creative introvert. That's... I can find inspiration from from actually anything. I can hear like a um uh, like cutlery tickling and I'm I'm like Oh, this is a sound I want. Uh, I, I can work on. Let me record that. <laughs> um. All right. So. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. Before we start, like with the interview. Yep. <laughs> um. You suggested a game. What is really? Mm -hmm. I never thought about this game. You know, when I came up with the concept of season three, mm -hmm. I was like, "All right, I want to play like a game with them." And then my friend was saying, yeah, do what you rather. And I was like, all right, I do that. And you came up now with the two lies and one truth. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it was um, a, a few years ago. Um, I was an exchange student with the, the Erasmus program. Okay. And um, and the, one, uh, one, of the, one of the guys uh, on our table, we, we actually went on, on a beer tour and we were actually um, going on some pubs and stuff. And we sat at a, one restaurant, just random random people around. And one suggested, you know, we should play a game to break the ice. And uh, I suggest we play like um, uh, two, uh, two uh, one fact, two, uh, two lies. And we we're like, okay, let's do this. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, I think it's, it's actually a, a really fun game. And yeah. uh, you actually get to discover a lot about the other one without, yeah. uh, without asking awkward questions. So... Or you're like you because um <clears throat> I said we like um we're doing free rounds. Mm -hmm. And when I typed out the the lies and the truths, I was like, hmm, this is gonna be really funny. <laughs> 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 um yeah. You, you wanna start? Yeah, okay. So Did you one. make it did you make it difficult or did you make it easy? <laughs> well, mm, let's say 
creative. Okay. Yeah, me too. Okay. Round one. Uh, okay, you have to guess. Like, I'll I'll tell you like three facts, and you have to guess which one is true. Okay. So first one. Um, I have ridden on the back of an elephant. I second. I have been on a safari trip to Africa. And third, I've held a baby lion in my arms. Who? <laughs> um. Um. Ah. Uh, well, that's a good one. Ah. Uh, I I don't know, but I believe you. You're kind of the type who goes to Africa and is it a safari? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> Then maybe the baby lion. Nope, again. <laughs> but I've written you... the back of the elephant. Wow, how was that? Yeah, I was. I think I was like uh, around seven or eight years old. Um, <gasps> I've never so done this in that age. <laughs> there was a circus that, uh, that my oh, parents took me. Okay. So I wrote actually, the, uh, at the end of the show, you could actually go and, um, and you know, uh, see the animals and stuff. Oh, and yeah. you could ride the the back of the elephant for for a picture, and the elephant would walk like a few steps. Uh, or you, or you could actually one of the things you hold a snake, or you could actually hold a baby lion. Uh, but <laughs> I didn't have time for that, so oh. I just rode the back of the elephant. Oh, I I am scared of heights. I would have never done that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think that's how I overcame my fear of heights. Hmm. Maybe I should do this the next yeah. time. Like I'm visiting circus and then after the show, it's just to ride an elephant. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like hello. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, my facts. First, I had post. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Sometimes I have like a language. I'm like, what? okay. So um, first, I hate podcasts. Second. I hate weddings. Or third, I hate I hate Berlin. Mm. So I had to find which one is true, right? Yeah. Mm. You had Berlin. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. I don't think you hate podcasts, so <laughs> go with the second answer. Really? You hate podcasts? My God. I told you I've become funny. I've never said that, but like, I was something? like, right, I'm just putting it into. I don't like listening to podcasts. I, you know, I do this podcast, but mainly because I can interview my legends. Uh-huh. Like I search for a format I can interview my legends and then, but I'm not a podcast listener at all. Mm, wow. <laughs> that's... that's... Okay. Carnival. It would be like if I'm if I made the music that I make and I didn't like 80s music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in that way, in that way. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> it's just I don't. Ha- I'm not a person who is patient, so like mm. I can't. Like I'm even going crazy after editing three hours the podcast episode, and I'm really I'm not the type who can like listen to one interview in an hour and like I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> To well, disappoint everybody. Yeah, I I don't like like too long po- uh, podcasts mm-hmm. like, uh, 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 or, or over an hour. Yeah. Usually, after forty five minutes are good for me. So yeah. I was listen to those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even listen to my own podcast. Like you know, yeah, I don't. Um, it's always it's always kind of if you're a podcaster and then you find you know then other podcasters are like hitting you like hey I have also a podcast maybe you want to support each other I'm like oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, that, okay, that there's, uh, I can understand that. I don't stream my own music, but uh, yeah, because because I've done it so many times when uh, when, when I was making it. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> just to find just to find mis- just to find mistakes, and I always like listen it once or twice after it's uploaded on Spotify and just see if there's any difference in the compression of the sound or whatever, just to notice uh, any anything that's that sounds off. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> that was a funny first round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. Uh, okay. So round two. Mm-hmm. So fact number one, I have never been on a boat. Round two. Uh, 
question uh, fact two i have never tried sushi oh. and uh, i have never been to scotland okay hmm maybe you've never eaten sushi no i love sushi okay <laughs> <laughs> fail um i can't believe you were never on a boat Okay, so you go for Scotland then. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah, I've never been to Scotland. I was like thinking like Scotland is like really, it, it's like next to England, but it's not that close to London. So I was like, hmm. Yeah, but you know, for most people that, that, that travel to London to live, it's one of the first places they visit whenever they get like uh, annual leave or they can, uh, they have some, some days off. Hmm. Okay. Because there's, like, there's so much history and uh, and architecture and uh, and so much art. Um, yeah, or like just the, like the Queen. She's always when she has the days off, she goes to Scotland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um, first. Um, oh yeah, this is about follow me. So like. <laughs> All right. Um. First, follow me was inspired by my brother. Second. Follow Me was three times edited before I published it. Third, Follow Me's original language is English. I know it's not English. Because uh, there was something about translation in the book. Uh, I go for the second one. You edited it three times. No. <laughs> it was inspired by my brother. And actually, if you open my book... Yeah, it's uh, dedicated to my brother Flo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, how could I miss this? <laughs> I was like, maybe, maybe he, he has been a good reader. Mm-hmm. It's fine, it's fine. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was thinking in, in technical terms, like uh, whenever I make my music, I mean, there were songs that I edited them like for like four or five times and <laughs> yeah yeah books are always like they are they have a first draft and then a second draft third draft yeah. um, but the follow me it's actually what you're reading is the first draft wow mm-hmm. that's amazing that rarely happens with my music <laughs> <laughs> that never happens again for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so round three so um, last round yeah so fact number one i have lived in czech republic um i have lived in sweden and i have never crossed countries on a ferry i will go with the third one which one the third the ferry no i've actually i've crossed um from estonia to finland with a with a ferry so <laughs> so you lived in sweden hmm? so you lived in sweden no, but I visited Sweden. My sister lived in Sweden. Oh. But I've lived in Czech Republic um, when I was on the Erasmus. <laughs> okay. Six months. It's considered like a decent time. To- yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Um, first, I'm a nerd for 80s music and I know almost every artist of the 80s. Second, I am a nerd for literature and now almost every famous writer. Third, I am a nerd for astro astrolo- astrology astro astrology. Sorry. And I know almost all meanings of the signs. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Fact two would be too obvious. Uh, I think you're an F for astrology. No. <laughs> wow, you're an F for the eighties music. Yes. <laughs> wow. I'm always battling. I'm always battling the the F with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> like when I was younger and just recently discovered the eighties, he was like, you know, like he knows everything better, and then I did a lot of research. I'm still like, I'm still like sometimes really discovering new artists but like that happens very rarely I'm like yeah. actually I, I have some vinyls from the from the 80s that were actually bought from the 80s not like reissues or anything and this yeah. is like 
and I and I and I was listening to listen to them on my on my vinyl player, and they, and they still sound so fresh. Like yeah, they sound like they, they were made like I don't know a couple of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what I love about the music of the eighties. Yeah, that's true. All right, that was two nice. lies and one truth. Yeah, I guess we learned a lot about each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe things you didn't want to know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That you hate podcasts? I'm like, what? But we currently are on one, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so you were here. And when I started the podcast one year ago, I actually had you on my guest list. Okay. Yeah, but I've never really, like, texted you. And then I saw that you really announced your debut album. And um, then I, already, I also have texted you about my novel, And then you have bought my novel. And that's mostly how I came back to your music. Like, oh, oh. I wanted to interview him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's super nice. Yeah. I was, I was so happy when I got your order from the book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you didn't know it was, it was me in the beginning until I... Uh, yeah, but I, I, you know, I have mentioned you in my story about your debut novel. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that you have, when I texted you about my DB Nova, that you said you will order it on that, on that day and mm -hmm. you haven't. So when I mentioned you and then right after the words, the order came in, I was like, oh. Yeah, I, 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 actually, I, I got busy with something and, and I was like, you know, I haven't ordered it. I'll, I'll get back to that. I have to do that. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I'm always going crazy if I get an order. I'm like, oh my God, somebody's interested <laughs> yeah. in my story. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, same goes for me. When whenever I see like um, new streams on my music, like lots of listeners add it because there's this app on uh, called Spotify for artists. Mm -hmm. where you can actually check um, uh, countries that people are listening uh, listening to you from, like all uh, age groups, genres, or yeah, or even cities. And and I was I, I'm always so happy when a new part of the world is added. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same for my podcast. There's mm -hmm. also a Spotify for podcasters. <laughs> So like maybe it's the same static, um, statics like you get with your music, just a podcast. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. Thank you again for buying my novel. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's been fun reading it so far. I like How the. Are you? The, I like I the reflections that. and the uh, and, and um, the tense of the atmosphere, especially like uh, in in the first chapter. I don't want to spoil that, but the, you know, there the was like with a with cinema hall and how everybody was so tense. And then uh, during the, the music video and, uh, you know, jumping from, uh, and then jumping to the past with a flashback. And I was like, what? <laughs> it took me by surprise. It, it was, it was, uh, I, I have enjoyed so far the description of feelings and, and how, how vibrant they are throughout the, uh, the book. Thank you. Thank you. Which chapter are you right now? I, I finished uh, the sixth chapter. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know what... <laughs> It's such a shame for me. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, here, the sixth chapter. So, like, you finished the sixth chapter. Yep. Uh, 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 uh. oh then you're almost done well there's still i believe there's still a lot, lot to um to, un to unveil <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i actually um from that moment on you reading now i've mm -hmm. written that one in two hours wow. <laughs> i think you're so impressed like what well, That's nice. That's actually, yeah. Sometimes is. Do you consider that fast or slow? That was fast. <laughs> like so. I'm actually a slower writer, but I remember, I I knew it will be finished soon. I don't know why, but I felt the energy, and it was Christmas. I think it was the second Christmas day, and I visited my aunt, and I was really tired. And when I get home, it was like 7 p.m., and I was like, "All right, mom, you know what? I lay now in bed and sleep and um." set an alarm for 2 a.m in the morning and then i get mm -hmm. up and write my finish my novel and that's what i've done yeah wow at 4 a.m in the morning my book was finished 
that's that's amazing actually um there are times with my music when i when i get an inspiration and yeah. I, I finish a song like um in real time just as i write it yeah. and i have like and i have my guitar or, or on the piano and uh i just write from from start to finish on on one go like uh i remember i think bittersweet paradise the the first single i think i wrote it in about I think 40 minutes I had like the uh, the, the complete song wow. uh, but I didn't I didn't actually know what uh, it, it was actually a lot different back then wh- when mm-hmm. I initially wrote it it had like some different um uh chord progressions but uh then I was working on something else and <laughs> and I was like you know I maybe I should I should change it to bit of sweet paradise because I, I really love that yeah so, <laughs> yeah when I was when, when I, and, and then I started producing it <laughs> it was uh when did when did you start producing like producing is such a like okay i'm songwriting sometimes as well but just for my own mm-hmm. right well still tell you what um i had this um kind of arranger keyboard when i was uh, when i was 10 years old mm-hmm. uh, my grandma got it for my birthday and um you know this uh, the arranger keyboard has like a uh, lots of sounds uh in it and it has lots of styles you can actually play like a groove like a rhythm and then you can add like a bass or or mm. or like different uh instruments on top of it okay. so this was like a foundation for me to actually start um composing my, my own music but at the time i wasn't writing any lyrics i was just making some instrumentals and and, and stuff mostly surprisingly enough electronic and techno <laughs> wow <laughs> that was the thing back then so um yeah. but then at, at the age of 13 I, uh, I you know puberty and stuff i started writing um like i started writing lyrics and uh writing songs about uh, you know um a girl like i, I liked in school and <laughs> she didn't like me back or that kind of stuff yes <laughs> and then as, as as i grew older i uh I started writing more and producing more and uh and then I switched like on uh I found like a uh, a friend of mine came, uh, came to my place and you know I have this software that you you can actually make music on the computer and I was like my my word just blew, uh, just blew <laughs> <laughs> my mind was like blown away yeah yeah I was I was actually blown away with all the all the stuff you could do and uh <laughs> Then I bought like an external sound card to actually start producing, and then I had like I found a way to connect my keyboard to that uh, to that uh, sound card and and to like lots of amazing stuff. Then I learned guitar, wow. and, <laughs> and I think started started building up from there. Yeah, step by step. Yeah, exactly. Uh, producing is such a complex thing. You mm-hmm. just like you just taught it yourself, or did you? Watch well, I went. I, well, I went to music school for it. So. Oh. Okay, okay, um, and then you were like in class of for producing or exactly. So um, it, it it started as uh, actually, I was actually torn between starting like songwriting or producing, mm-hmm. and producing has 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 lot lot more opportunities, and, and I like creating stuff. And I thought to myself, you know, I started with making instrumentals, so lyrics yeah. came after it. So I should start with what um what subconsciously or in my heart i think it was the foundation f- uh, for me to start making music and then i did production courses and uh and that that opened opened some doors for me here and there <laughs> but uh, at, the, at the same time i was still keeping keeping some songs to myself with songwriting um because they were like very personal there were others i gave away <laughs> and <laughs> gave them away yeah to another artist to like or actually I, I incorporated them in commercials i was making music for some commercials uh on tv or or, or internet and, and stuff so there was some actually there was some music that actually started to become a song and then i was like I'm, i wasn't too happy with it but people mm-hmm. were actually willing to buy it for a commercial i was like okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> i'll finish this that's cool if they hear oh. this, they probably think I'm <laughs> I'm a douchebag, but <laughs> no, no. Well, no, it just it just happens sometimes. You start something yeah. like, oh no, I don't like this. Or like sometimes, um, a book I haven't finished yet um, was actually coming out of another book idea. Mm-hmm. So, like I had a book idea, and we're like so uh, 
Oh, no, actually, like, I, okay, like, I started once editing Follow Me, um, but I deleted all the edited stuff <laughs> <laughs> because it became so complicated. Um, but, yeah, I had some, I added some new scenes, and I remember that I wasn't, then I deleted them all again, but I was happy, like, really satisfied with this one scene. And so from this scene, out of a completely new book came. So, like, yeah. But it has nothing to do with follow me, but like it still has the, the same scene. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's actually nice, and uh, you know, it, it, uh, these um these small things are actually can go from um you know also apply to music or or, or even theater. Yeah, you get inspired for something you made in the past, and then you want to make something something new and fresh, and you use like use the old stuff you made as an inspiration. Yeah, and then you, exactly. Um, you can. You, I mean, there are countless of songs that I made that I've used the same drums. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why okay. not? Do you I do you listen to the Bee Gees? What? Who? The Bee Gees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not like a, like a huge like uh, like a huge uh, fan of them, but I'm, I'm I have like saved a couple of songs on my playlists. Okay, yeah, because I just recently, uh, like in March or something, I watched the Bee Gees documentary, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart, and there they were talking about the how um how in i think it was from night fever yeah from night fever um the drummer got sick and they had to do staying alive but the drummer got sick and couldn't yeah. be there so they took the drums from night fever and re um uh how's it saying bladed reward yeah uh, uh, in rewind. It yeah and slowed it a bit, little bit and that's the drums of staying alive and i was like like you can still do, use the same stuff for another song. Why not? <laughs> Always, they are the um, the sounds. Actually, you actually take some sounds and then you tweak them and make something different. I yeah. mean, I, I can tell you right now that um, basically two of my singles, like um, "Bittersweet Paradise" and "Girl in Black," have the same have the same drums. It's the same Why sound. Not? I just Why tweak not? them differently. Yeah, why not? You isolate them. You can actually hear that. Yeah. So. I will take care the next time I listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> like play them next to each other. Like, <laughs> no. Probably you'll notice, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, went, oh, I forgot an answer. I forgot a question. How do we, I don't know. But like, yeah, like music just, but like, I think, there are so many songs that um because when somebody gets lawsuit or something i'm like dude that's music like we can you that will always always be something that was you know some sometime there like you know what i mean well th there are there are countless of songs but there are only so many instruments so you can you can actually write like a thousand songs on a piano yeah, but they all, but they, they will still have a piano sound. So that's true. You can even have the same chord, uh, chord progression, but um, yeah, but you can still tweak it and make it sound different. Yeah, exactly. You change the sound. I mean, well, with guitars is more complicated because there's countless of uh, guitar types, but but with a piano, the piano makes one particular sound. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. It, it's it's the the only thing that's that changes with uh, with every song is is the color mm -hmm. of the sound the coloration of the sound um or some added effects like reverb or delays or the, it was like oh, I'm, going, it. i know i'm going too technical right now oh yeah that's fine but you can also there there's some also some cool tricks with music uh, something that, that's called saturation mm -hmm. where you can actually uh uh, run a microphone through the uh, through the piano and then run that microphone through a, git a guitar amp so wow okay i haven't done that <laughs> well <laughs> it's it's um it's something that um, makes a uh, production like very creative and also the same thing goes for um and some things were actually um discovered uh, kind of accidentally Mm -hmm. uh, in the music industry, every, everybody keeps talking about the Phil Collins sound back from the 80s, uh, how he made that snare drum hit yeah. when it's reverb, but it's not actually reverb because it stops right there. It's like yeah. it's what, what they call a gator reverb, where it opens and it closes. 
And uh, it actually, ha- that happened accidentally because there was like a mic hanging from the ceiling. And it was intended for a guitar track, but um, they had it next to the snare drum and, and, they, caught, and they accidentally caught that sound. <laughs> and everybody loved it. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, but, the, but the label didn't like it. Oh, but yeah, then they released it anyway. Like but then they like actually that. convinced them to release it anyway, and it became such an iconic sound. Yeah, in the air tonight, you know the song. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. labels are like are like um, Dirty Dancing, the movie. They wanted to burn this movie, and look what it is now. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sometimes they're like, "Oh, this will won't be," or like, um, uh, "I know about Uptown Funk." That. Yeah. The label said, ah, we don't know if this is going to be a hit because the latest, I think the last album of Mark Ronson wasn't, do, wasn't go, doing that well. So when he came out with Upton Funk, they were like, ah, we don't know if this was going to be a hit or something. And then they were like, all right, let's just put it out. And then he put it out. And... Yeah, it became the big, one of the biggest hits of uh, that year. Yes, exactly. Or of the decade, I think, something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes they're wrong. <laughs> oh, well. Above um, all, they're, they're businessmen, so. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, how is your writing, like, um, how is the songwriting process going for you? Well, usually I get an idea with, um, it, it actually usually starts, it starts different every time, but um, usually I I get like a melody that plays, plays a lot in my head. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, I can be anywhere. I can be on like uh, on the metro. I can be on the street. I can be at home uh, doing something. And then there's like this melody that's stuck in my that's stuck in my head. And usually a small line of lyrics, but it doesn't really make any sense at that time. So I'm <laughs> mumbling like various like uh, gibberish. Um, and then what I what I do if I can't work on it at, at that moment, I usually take my phone and uh, record a voice memo of me singing that stuff. Like just hitting my chest sound like a drum or something. yeah it's <laughs> or, just that you know it afterwards like clo- close by so I can actually save that idea because I, I, I might not remember it when I, by the time I get home or by the time mm-hmm. I get to work on it yeah exactly and um, that's how it usually starts and uh, and then I sit down and probably work on it and uh, I start like make, making like a loop or mm-hmm. uh, or I, go, I just grab my guitar and then ju- I just play something, play a little bit with it, get a piece of paper and start writing and usually turns it into a song. <laughs> usually. <laughs> yeah, wow. sometimes it may turn it into something that I, I'm like, okay, let's leave it. But, <laughs> but I, I record what I've done so far uh, in a voice memo because you never know when, when, you know when I'll get back to it. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, and uh, I always have like my sister... Um, gave me uh this little notebook Ooh. and it has and i have like make, made notes of songs i've written in here like <laughs> yeah, why not i also have a lot of these things i actually I actually have like one tiny one where mm-hmm. i'm just grabbing sometimes it's weird but sometimes i'm laying in bed awake and then there's a dialogue going on in my head and i'm like oh this is good like i don't it doesn't even yeah. have to match the current book i'm walking on but i'm like the dialogue is so good. Maybe I can use it one day. <laughs> you know what? The the, mo- the most frustrating stuff is when when it happens um, when I'm trying to sleep. Yeah. It could be like four a.m. in the morning, and 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 I'm, I'm like laying in bed. I cannot I cannot sleep, and this melody or this uh, this lyric, this line is stuck in my head. And I'm like, okay, if I try to sleep now, I probably won't remember it in the morning. Yeah. So oh, I have to get up. So I'm like, Theo, come on, get up despite the cold or whatever just get up and, and write it yeah so i try to convince myself and to do that lately and um a few um like a few years ago i, I used to finish them right away now because I'm, I'm busy with work and stuff i usually write down my idea record a voice memo and then leave it for some time when i have uh, when i'm actually free to do it yeah but back back when i was um still a student and, and stuff i would like i would just write the whole song and if you actually see my folder on my, on my computer when the, the initial document was created you see like 4 a.m 6 30 a.m like <laughs> <laughs> 7 a.m in the morning so many you could put out like an album of like uh, 3 a.m de- demos 
I've actually thought of that, but there are songs that I, that I never want to put out because they're like, I mean, lyrics that I wrote when I was like 14 or 15. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of them are good, uh, that I'm, I still play them on, on, on la- when, I, when I play live, when I used to play live, COVID. Uh, yeah. But there are some of them that I'm like, uh, oh, I cringe so much when I, when I, when I read those lyrics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes it happens to you that you just write something really cringe down and you're like, okay. Yeah, because we we grow up and we don't we don't really process uh, things the same way. Yeah, or like it, it, it even happens now to me. Like maybe it's because I'm still sixteen, but like um, I remember on Valentine's Day, <laughs> I sat down and wrote a letter to a crush, and I said I just said "dear crush," and then I noted on my feelings because I felt how this um, <laughs> how this crushing face is like fading mm-hmm. away on my side and I was writing this letter and now I'm looking back at it and it, it, it really sounds cringe but like now I'm submitting it to magazines that they publish it because, <laughs> but because it's like really it's it's something it became something creative and something that um you know that's not often read mm-hmm. yeah that's that's actually true and uh, nowadays um like in 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 the in the last few few months, I realized that uh, if I write something cringe, I probably put it out anyway, because uh, yeah, you know, cringe things now this are interesting. So yeah, or like cringe is always from another perspective. You know what I mean? So exactly. like my best friend is always. I have a private account and I'm doing cringe stories in there, <laughs> and she always says she says that it's cringe and that I'm sometimes crazy, and I'm like, well, I don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's just together. like letting some some of your insecurities get out to the world, and yeah. uh, it's it, it's also a vulnerable side of us. Yeah, but that's what artists are always doing. <laughs> you know, uh, our, whenever uh, I I talk about cringe in music, I was uh, one thing that comes to mind is the that Taylor Swift song, um, the the one she did with uh, Brown and Yuri called "Me." there's a part called uh that was oh hey kids spelling is fun <laughs> yes <laughs> i know they removed it from spotify but uh but on the music video it's still there <laughs> yeah. oh yeah but it's fun yeah exactly um yeah you said you wanted to talk with me about literature mm? did you understand me what Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Do you want to talk about literature now, or like, uh, should we first talk about the UDP album? Well, I don't mind. Well, okay. it's, it's your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I listened yesterday, yesterday mm-hmm. night. That's so funny. I watched my TV show like every night before I'm, before, before I'm going to sleep, mm-hmm. and uh, the theme song was ending, and I. It's, press and stop because i was like oh my god i haven't listened to the single yet like i can go to this interview and be like i haven't listened to the single yet <laughs> and and i really loved it i think i had it three times on repeat i'm sorry <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like streams before the song is even out <laughs> do they count like do these streams count now or like no. do they count Oh. No, this is like this is actually private. It would count for for SoundCloud, the, the platform that I, that I actually uh, sent yeah. it from. It's a private link; nobody can see it yet. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not a Spotify link because um, yeah, Spotify but if it's, allow private. Yeah, session. but if it's coming out on SoundCloud, then people will be like, "Oh, yeah. six times already heard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably that that will count. Yes, yeah. I remember. So, I remember the dude, um, the the legend who did my. Um, my um theme song for the podcast he mm-hmm. sent me like a playlist of songs he's he had done in that year and i could choose my theme song in it <laughs> and there's another song he didn't give to me because he wants to put it out on his own but like this song i still listen to it secretly and i s- see how the <laughs> play counts are like pushing up and up and it's still unreleased and i'm like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that's that's super super cool yeah, at least yeah. he knows that maybe he looks back at it one day and be like, oh, this song was kind of, this song was really uh, fun for somebody to listen to. Yeah, <laughs> people find it quite fun, interesting if it's not if it's not released. And uh, yeah. there, there's been like uh, lots of um, 
situations where unreleased songs get a lo- lot of attention. Yes. Yeah, so like somebody is making an album and then the um, the songs that didn't make the final cut of the album are yeah. getting leaked and then people are listening to them like, oh my God. Yeah, and they're going crazy about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, even Ch- um, did you, Charlie XC, um, XC, uh, XCX yeah. was like tweeting the other day about like how uh, making music is such a intense process and that she writes indeed a lot of songs, but she never sometimes thinks she will publish them and they should s- just stop with like oh johnny can you please release the unreleased songs mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean ed, ed sheeran had like uh before before he even released his first album he had he had like uh 50 songs le- leaked yes so yes but like but like the leaking like um of the songs that ma- made actually the cut is kind of like mean in my perspective you know what i mean mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That that happened to Dua Lipa, I think, the Future Nostalgia. That's why she put out the album one week before it actually came out because it got. Yeah, leaked. actually, I actually read, read about it. I didn't actually um, hear any any of the leaks of, of that album, uh, <laughs> but but I was pleasantly surprised because the album the album is fire. I love it. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. So anyway, I listened to three times or more on the, the, on Cheater. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I really liked it. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's um, actually I I made that song um uh, last June, and I was planning to release it as as a, as the next single. Um, the thing is, this was actually part of an online class uh, that I took uh, in June. You know, June was the time was the time when I was tra- when I traveled back to Greece and stuff. Actually, mid June, and I started in the beginning. And the class started from first uh, to June until the thirtieth. Mm-hmm. So it was like a whole month, like making three songs uh, on uh, on this class. And it was hosted by um, by another uh, indie uh, pop artist. Uh, I don't know if you know him. He's he's he's, uh, he's from the Netherlands. His name is Blanks. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, I know him. <laughs> So yeah, he has like on on learnmonthly.com he has like a like a like his uh like an online participation class and you okay. actually uh follow like his style of production and and you work on three songs, one cover song and two originals. Mm-hmm. And one of the songs that I uh, and and I started writing on and uh, for the second song I made Cheater. I had like actually written like um some part of the lyrics in the, prior to that session. Okay. And I was like, you know, this is the song I, I, I actually want, want to make because it was playing in my head, it playing in my head all the time. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna put my '80s inspiration in it, and <laughs> I'm gonna make it like a, a tribute song um, to um, to my favorite band called uh, Bleachers. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that and when people actually heard it, they could hear the, the inspiration from Bleachers and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I was really happy with with the, with the result. And every, everybody was, uh, someone was commending because at the end of the set, at the end of the, of the, uh, of the deadline for for the for the session, yeah. uh, you have to actually post the song, and people could, could like comment on it in the community uh, yeah. space of of that um, uh, course. And uh, people, some someone said, "Oh, this should be like in every '80s uh, teen movies." <laughs> 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 yeah, it has the vibes of it. It has the vibes of it. Of course. Yeah, I was actually inspired by uh, by eighties movies. Um, yeah, and uh, and also my my favorite band Bleachers. It's um, I used like I used piano. I used like a subtle like guitars on clean, and uh, and then the synthesizers, of course. Yeah, I I, I I love it, part. and <laughs> I have it spinning in my head the entire day now. <laughs> and actually, the but it's a good um, thing. Thank you. And actually, the album, uh, ref- uh, the whole album, reflects the uh, the inspirations that that I've had uh, o- over the over the years that in- that inspired my music. Um, I mean, Cheater may sound like a like like a Bleachers album, but there's another song on, on the album that, um, that's called Strangers Again. Uh, when I played it for someone, um, he said, "Did you write it with a with a 1975? Because it sounds like a very 1975 song." <laughs> And I was pleasantly surprised, yeah. And there's another ballad uh, called "How Do We Let Love In" that sounds like a Taylor Swift song, but <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so 
I think uh, it shows like l- l- lots of different sides of me and how how music, uh, how popular music inspired me um, to make what I'm, what, to do what I, what I always do. Yeah. And uh, your album is called Right Then, Right Now. Yeah. And it's going to be released in two parts. So there's the, because I, it was written in, in actually in, in two phases of my life. I mean, um, so the first part will, will be called Right Then and the first and the second one will be called Right Now. Oh, okay. So it's like a side A, side B kind of kind yes. of thing. Uh, right then, um, the first part of, of the album, actually each part has seven songs, so 14 in total. Um, so the first part, all the songs were written in, uh, during the first wave of, of the pandemic. So yeah. they're all from uh, songs from last year. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's like actually all about, uh, most of them actually, except for one, uh, all about a, a past relationship. And uh, how how it went from the from the the Theo was perfection still breakdown. Can you repeat that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the internet connection was just like what happened. I don't know. The internet connection uh, connection was just oh. like um yeah, like it okay. was sounded really good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So yeah, I was like the first part of uh, of uh, most of the songs are about uh, a past relationship, how it started, how uh, from the top um, when we were feeling like we were on the t- on top of the world and the uh, the ending and then the breakdown uh, of it came. So no, it has so like an all entire these, journey. All this. So it's an entire journey of falling uh, in, and falling out of love. It's not it's not in, in perfect order, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but I like sh- showcasing these uh, these the, these feelings of, of the past. Yeah. Except for one song, uh, one, of the, one of the slow songs called "How Do We Let Love In." It's uh, it's about uh, um, society basically. Yeah, it, every album needs a society song. So and and the second exactly, and the second part was written. Um, pretty much during the second wave of, of the pandemic, like uh, I started writing it uh, probably in November mm-hmm. and um, I finished, I, I finished it like in February. Okay. And uh, it, it explores a, a different aspect, like me moving, moving to Athens, like uh, uh, getting in, in, into a new relationship, talking about that and, uh, and everything that builds up from there. That sounds cool. And, it, and, and, it, and it's like, like a full, like a full, What? So it's like 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 I'm a, like uh you know going through two phases like the first the first uh, the first wave of the pandemic and then yeah. me coming to coming to Greece and uh, living a different life than what it was before. Yeah. So you're gonna release it also in two parts. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Do you? So uh, one, the first part is gonna uh, is will be out um, midsummer. Okay. So in July. And the second part at the end of the summer won't be like too far, like not too far from each other. Do you? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. I'm ah, here. there you are. <laughs> what happened? It stopped again. I don't know. It was just freeze. Really? I, like... could, I could still see you from <laughs> I could still hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe it got windy, that's why. Um but yeah, so the first part is coming out beginning of August and the second one is mm-hmm. oh, like beginning of uh summer. <laughs> I'm thinking of August, and the second one um, at the end. Of- actually, in, in actually, in uh, first part is coming is in uh, first part is coming in July, and uh, the second part at the end of August. I'm excited. I can't wait to listen to yeah. it. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I'm I'm excited and scared at the same time. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that's completely fine and understandable. Like it's your first album. 
yeah i haven't i haven't really really done such a thing before and yeah you always so really it's it's a new experience for me yeah because it's easier to get picked up by playlists yeah <laughs> uh, for marketing purposes but uh, i reached the point like actually i didn't decide to make an album until uh, uh when i actually Thing all so so from all that time I was actually deciding which is going to be my next single. Okay. And I thought to myself, you know, you know what, Theo, you you've thought a lot about numbers and the streams and the <laughs> listeners and stuff. And and I just thought to myself, you know, screw it all. I'm just going to do what uh, I'm just going to do this for for people that like my music. I, I I don't care about about any any metrics or analytics or. All that. I'm just going to do my thing, and uh, for once, I'll take the risk of putting. And I told myself I'm going to put out more songs than I ever have in my entire career so far. Yeah. So. Yeah, but you you haven't even like um, released EPs because sometimes artists um, um, releasing before they release their debut album, they're releasing mm -hmm. EPs. EPs yeah. until it's going. I don't know, but I just I interviewed on Wednesday. I interviewed an artist who. Um, she signed now but like she um she decided that she would put out eps until she has like a, a good fan base to put out like an album mm -hmm. like i really like when people are still like um independent still like putting out um albums because it's i think putting out albums is um it's like it's it's like a story you know what i mean exactly. it's just not snippets of a story exactly mm -hmm. and uh, uh the thing the thing is um, that's when I told myself, you know, you don't, you don't have to care about uh, analytics anymore. Just um, do, uh, do what you what you do for the sake of music and for the sake of uh, of your listeners. It's the pandemic, yeah. and people are staying home more than ever. So if they have <laughs> something to listen to, so yeah. here's my album. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> yeah, or like even if you, I mean, I think um, the moment you start, you like stop caring about all these. Like if people will read it or something, for example, in my case, um, it starts to like get to people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like I, I don't care how how it goes. I mean, I still have like a like a solid strategy to to release it. But, yeah, uh, of course. But it, but it's not like uh, oh, you know, this is the song I'm I'm, I'm gonna pick because it has the most potential to be picked up by radio. Uh, well, I may think about it in the in the back of my head, but it won't be the priority. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, people like my uh, people like my music for what for what it is, and uh, I don't I don't want to feel uh, I don't want my fans to feel like they're like uh, some part of uh, like um, you know some part of commercialism. So, yeah, well, I want to I want to build a family, so, uh, like yeah. a, like a really close fan base. So, I put an album with uh, putting my heart out and. Um, <laughs> We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You said you also wanted to talk with me about literature. Mm -hmm. As I am an author. <laughs> yeah. Um, Good. What? Yeah, of course. Because uh, I, re um, I read books. Not, not too many. But um, whenever I read, I'm really specific what, what I because uh, I like simulating stories. I like uh, stories that, that uh, can make me visualize in, in my head um, the scene and, and what's happening. Okay. Is following uh, me making you that? <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, what actually captivated me, usually um, what happens with books is that you read the, the first chapter and it's not until you've reached like the third or the fourth chapter where you actually um, get a visual in your head of what happens. Yeah. Well, especially nowadays, because back back if I read like an Agatha Christie like a novel, probably I'll I'll, I'll visualize the whole thing in my head. But because <laughs> um, back then, writing was was different. Yeah. Now um, there there have only been a few books that have actually um, managed to do that. And I like what I liked about yours is like from the first scene, uh, I could actually visualize like we were in a big space. Yeah. It wasn't mentioned that it was a theater until uh, like uh, later on, and then I was like, okay, this is a, this is a stage. This is seeing some, something's big happening. I can actually see. I actually felt like myself being in a dark space, uh, oh. uh, like and uh, like and actually being there and seeing. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> be, uh, like being behind the 
character behind um, uh, Alice and like uh, and then see the stage light <laughs> to, uh, going on and yeah and I, that's why that's what I liked about about your book it actually captured me and uh, I could actually visualize it and see the characters uh, paint their picture their faces in my in my head oh. and I feel that, honored. That, that was uh, to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I could even visualize them in my head, like with her clothing. They would be like very, I don't know, like long dresses, like or like suits. Some of them would be like very Gatsby style, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. kind of. Yeah. Well, that was the beginning. That I feel honored. But, um, but yeah, same thing goes. Well, another book that I managed to do this was um, the Witcher books. From from who is it? or the hmm? the what kind of books you know they what which books the um what was it the um from uh lauren uh no, no the from andrei sapkowski oh you no know, the one that became a tv series um like a few uh, a couple of years ago yeah 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 okay so it's like medieval fantasy yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah, that was one. Uh, that was an, an, uh, another series of books that captivated me long before the series came out, okay. and I could actually uh, see that. Also, the Harry Potter books, as as I was growing up, yeah, I could see that. And so lately, I've been v- very picky with uh, choosing books uh, that <laughs> I like, and uh, but yeah, I like. Uh, I usually like uh, books that are, that tell a story. And um, they actually have a plot twist. <laughs> I'm really because <laughs> uh, it actually keeps me engaged and uh-huh. uh, makes me w- want to read and see see what's happening. There's mm-hmm. there's like the um, the thrill. Uh, yeah. You're actually anxious about what's going to happen next, and uh, is the um, is your life in danger? Is something bad's going to ha- is something bad going to happen? So. That's one of the things that is uh, the the draw me um, to read books. Yeah, yeah. I was sort of with, um, about the plot twist. I was thinking, you know, as a there are two kind of writers. There are one writers that write books and think about all the technical terms and like, oh, we need to there we need their plot twist or something. And I'm like somebody who just writes, and then afterwards I'm like. Does the story has a plot twist? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't always have, need to have a plot twist, but uh... yes, yes, of course not. But like sometimes it's like, does the story have a plot twist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. For example, the book I write currently, um, <clears throat> it's not a follow up to follow me. Like I planned on doing that. <laughs> But then I was like, hmm, I don't know. I, I'm I'm going to live another story. And um the book actually I just um I wrote on it till three AM this morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was keeping me awake. And um yeah, actually this this one to not like spoil you. <laughs> but like um I like stories where um where you have like the, the story I'm currently writing, I started writing it and the main character, all my friends around me, like I read them the first page and I told them all about the main character. And they were like, I don't like this guy. And and just this the sentence on them made me think. And I was like, all right, I'm going to, you know, like I'm going to make them like him. And um, yeah, yeah, that was like really pretty cool. I think I wouldn't have done the story wouldn't have turned out how it is now without the sentence mm. of my best friend like i don't like this guy <laughs> i think i think that's uh, that's what's interesting about books because it, it makes you feel things yes so they don't feel like uh distant characters of some some story uh, you actually connect with those you, you actually see if you like someone or, or not mm. and that's what uh, that's what makes a story interesting you know even if if, if you see, if some I don't like that character, that's a motivation to actually keep keep making it more intense. <laughs> yeah, or I remember. Um, so, like, the, the book is coming out like in some months, but like, 
<laughs> I just tell you that, um, that at the beginning, um, yeah, they don't like um, the male main character, but there's also a female main character. And at the beginning, it looks like this entire story um, is placed around her, but Dan and Truth are placed around him. So they kind of forced to like live with him his life to find out what how her life is going on. So um, uh-huh. wow. I'm like forcing them to um, <laughs> to accompany my male main character they don't like. <laughs> That's very clever. Yeah. <laughs> Because That's I was just like thing. thinking, I remember I was sitting there and he was like, I don't like that guy. And I was like, I, but you know, like I love him. And I was like, how can you not like him? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this, oh. the, um, you see this so much um, going on behind uh, writing uh, a book and, uh, and <laughs> writing something. There's, there's even, even though f- for some people it may look so simple. There is uh, so much thought uh, behind how I'm going to build this character. I'm going to make people relate relate to it. Sometimes you, I suppose you don't even do it on purpose. It's just how it yes. comes out. Yes, exactly. Or um, in Follow Me, there's this one scene where Alice is putting uh, sugar mm-hmm. instead of salt into the noodles when mm-hmm. she's cooking. Yeah. Yeah. And that scene, I was sitting with my um, with my piano teacher, and he was reading my book at that time. And he was like, "You need to have to give it a scene where people can, re- like, the listener can, um, not the listener, the reader can relate to." And I was mm-hmm. like, "Hmm." And then he he noted down like three examples, and that was one like, um, um, uh, uh, using sugar instead of salt. And I was like, "Hmm." <laughs> that sounds there interesting. You have it. <laughs> No, I have a Christmas scene of uh, sugared noodles instead of salted noodles. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, all senses play part. So yeah. when you describe sounds, people can hear them in, in their heads. When you describe a scene, people can visualize it or, you, or, or the smell or even taste. Yeah. So all senses come together. Yeah, exactly. Like, or te- or when you describe a texture, people can actually feel like, like, like they're touching it. So yeah um there's this one scene i have to ask you because i just recently got from another reader that Mm -hmm. this scene was was kind of like really special for them um okay scene where um uh sorry um joachim (laughs) really really typical german name here (laughs) okay (laughs) uh where joachim is um coming hold on i look for his um that's there. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, send me the, the page and I'll find it because I got mm-hmm. the book. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I have to find the page as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Hold on. Oh, yeah. Here. Um, beginning of February um, 84, page 84. Beginning 84. of February 2008. Yeah. Mm, beginning of February 2018, yep. The scene where Joachim is knocking on the door and wants to go to Michael, but um, Ellen is there. Uh-huh, yeah. How, how did you feel in that scene? Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to tell why? <laughs> what? You want to tell why? <laughs> mm, I mean... um it's 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 awkward because it's like it's a, a very tense atmosphere, mm-hmm. but um, not in a serious way, but in in a, in, in a more in, in a situation where, you know, how do I? Re- I mean, I was thinking about the other characters like uh, Ellen. Uh, how do yeah. I, I, was, I was thinking how would she react to this? And I'm and I was like, um, she makes him a cup of coffee. Yeah, she makes him a coffee. Yeah, and I <laughs> said, shall I make some coffee? And, and like. Okay, this is some some way to break the ice and uh, and, and 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 go ahead. And it yeah. made me feel like really awkward. And uh, <laughs> okay, I mean, everybody would feel would feel that way if if they were present there. Yeah, exactly. Scene. So 
<laughs> <laughs> because she was like she was like coming to me because um I said um she's in my class and she said she said right next to me she and I was like just asking her like yeah where which scene are you currently and she said that she just finished reading that scene and she was like something is special about this scene and I was like hmm yeah <laughs> because it, al- it already um it also felt special writing it so I was like um I was like hmm crazy that the reader feels the same energy as I does um, exactly I mean, and I mean it's it's like watching a movie and you see that that character uh going to the door and then you see who's answering them like uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> you're like uh-oh he's drunk what what, yeah. what happened <laughs> mm-hmm. or like you know that now that um that Ellis um that she cheated on him mm-hmm. like on the day he wanted to propose to her and like my classmate didn't know that yet and I was just like oh girl <laughs> he was something because she was like yeah I don't know if she said no and I was like oh god she like she will she will have the biggest surprise ever <laughs> well it's um well it, it paves I think it paves the um um the plot from 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 the beginning yeah but it's, not, it's not making it too obvious yes of, of, but of it's hitting at what it. happened you, you you know it, it sets the mood of, of what's about to follow <laughs> uh but but you never know how, how it's going to turn out to be or or yeah. the details of the past that's why i like the flashbacks and uh and the, the, the different dates going back to christmas and <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty um um the flashback story and where like uh, Joachim is picking up his stuff and he gets his flashback. The flashback scene was actually in the first chapter, but I mm-hmm. edited it out to like, you know, to not spoil everything in the first chapter. I was like, no, I can do that. <laughs> well, I, I also like the fact that it's uh, it's set in different timelines. You you, you, know, you jump to, to a past uh, timeline. Yes. Like, like I mean, it starts in like April uh, 2018, and then sometime later it goes back to Christmas 2017. So yeah, yeah. It was yeah. actually it was actually because I didn't plan it out. It was like really um, complicated to write. That's mm-hmm. why I did the uh, the te- the tense change because I was like, otherwise I can't write it. You know, like what happens now is like written in the present and then what happened in the past should be in the past (laughs) yeah i see yeah so it's like yeah i I could see that with the way with the way you were changing the the tense and i was like okay so in my head this should be like black and white now (laughs) (laughs) that's cool that's cool um maybe one day i'm gonna do a movie out of it i will think about that flashback why not flashback black white yeah very Gatsby suits or like a short film I don't know yeah yeah it's more of a short film that's true um okay so um yeah what topics of do you read uh in general I don't I don't believe you that you usually um read books about breakups and love stories and <laughs> well no but uh i'll tell you what happened um there was this um actually i'll tell you what actually got me into into this type of um of genres there was a movie uh it's actually an old movie uh, called um never let me go mm-hmm. so um, it's about uh acceptance and accepting your fate uh it's a it's a very like drama involving with, like a love triangle yeah and then accepting fate um i won't give you too many spoilers there's like a like like a trailer on on, on youtube if you want to watch that uh but it, it's a, it's a really intense and uh movie and has like very intense feelings and okay. uh and sentiments and, that, and i was like you know sometimes love stories can be like that and uh and um uh, and i was like okay let's let's read read a few <laughs> so i haven't read, read read too many of those but uh yeah. but i'm like i said in the beginning i'm very picky about uh about those uh, i'll pick something that sparks my interest and mm-hmm. yeah yeah i also um i met i interviewed another um writer and she was like saying she hates love stories and i was mm-hmm. like oh, but you will read mine <laughs> <laughs> And she said, she said something about my love stories. It's not the cheesy love stories. It mm-hmm. has, it's, it's pretty different than 
others but still has some elements but like it's um it's different to other love stories and i was like yeah it is because i mean it, it, right from the start like who um not many, many people would jump to uh a lot of literary situations not like oh we're in, we're in a theater scene where the where they're showcasing a music video and <laughs> <laughs> uh instead of instead of doing a description that stems from the past you actually uh describe what's happening in uh, in the, um, between them through a music video which reflects life yeah so you use art as an example yeah that was that was beautiful sir yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you and thank you for your time i think now okay. it's um almost 8 p.m for you right yeah mm -hmm. almost thank dinner time <laughs> thank you for your time <laughs> thanks for inviting me bye have, have fun take care you too bye bye Yeah.